What's up, guys? This is Showtime's Fight Forum. I'm your boy Showtime. Thank you guys for watching. Please make sure you subscribe. Follow me on social medias at Showtime Sanders. Ah, man. So today's going to be a recap uh, for UFC Vegas 27. And also, we're going to talk about Bellator. Um, when I say Bellator, we're really going to talk about Cyborg. Um, I'll go first with the Bellator. Um, it was a... I'm not even going to fake. I did not like that card, man. That card was pretty boring. Um, the fights, the, the main card at least, wasn't as exciting as I wanted it to be. But Cyborg lived up to everything she is, man. Um, Woo! That girl's good. <laughs> uh, Dan, granted, that, that's a fight that, you know, she already ha has had. She won the fight pretty easily in the UFC. They tried to hype it, talking about the fight was an early stoppage. I'm like, bro, she was going to get knocked out regardless. Um, but then we got a repeat of it, and it was just dominant. So, I mean, nobody in Bellator is beating Cyborg. Let's just keep it a stack. Uh, it's Casagano has the best chance, and that's if she can hold her down for five whole rounds, which I don't think she will. Uh, she still has her chin up in the air when she fights, and she's very hittable. She will get dominated. Um, but I do think that should be, like, the next fight, I guess. Um, I don't. 145 pound class just not deep in the world. It's just not that many, uh, unfortunately. And I really wish that we could just get this tournament like of like 145 pound all around the world, and we can get these like the cyborgs and the Amanda Nunes and uh, Kayla Harrison and get some of these fighters out here to actually compete against each other. So we can actually get some interesting fights. That's like, oh, I don't know who might win. Granted, everybody gonna say Amanda Nunes is going, but. I genuinely do think that those two girls have a chance at beating Amanda Nunes. And also, obviously, Valentina Shinshenko has a chance of beating her as well. Um, but back to the fight. Uh, good. I mean, great late stoppage. I mean, her cardio impresses me, man. Like, at times you think she's tired, but girl, girl keep pushing. Uh, we already know she's strong as ever. You know her combos are relentless. But she, methodical cyborg, can beat Amanda Nunes. I do believe when they, when they fought... I think that Cyborg assumed that she hurt her, hurt Amanda Nunes, and she went in for the kill and forgot or didn't realize that Amanda Nunes has, has power. So, you know, she went in reckless. But I do think a more patient Cyborg can definitely beat Amanda Nunes. And I'm upset because I know we're more likely never going to get that fight again. But I just know we need that fight as MMA fans. We should. These are the two best in the world at 145, and they need to fight a second time, 100%. Um, but... Well, like I said, more likely won't happen because UFC hates Cyborg. Uh, and the UFC is damn sure not letting the man Nunez go for nothing. Uh, but yeah, so that that was that fight. You know, once again, Leslie Smith really didn't have too much to offer. Who's surprised? Um, but yeah, so let's talk about the other fight, the UFC Vegas fights. All right. So Carla Esparza. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not only did I not really expect her to win, like, I expected her to actually get finished. I thought that she wasn't going to be able to get the takedowns. I thought she, she um, her opponent would be able to stuff her takedowns and be able to get a TKO finish. Because I know when Carla doesn't really get her takedown, she's desperate. And honestly, she's just a, uh, she's a flopping fish. She basically just going to get punched until she goes to sleep. Or, you know, the referee gets her away. Um, but I've won. She's gotten better. Let's just Let me just say that as a wrestler, as a striker... As a more confident fighter mentally, she's just all out better. I mean, I saw that when she fought Claudia, and I was like, hmm, she's actually tough. Like, she's gotten better because the Carlos Sparza of old would have gotten washed by Claudia, but no, 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 no. She gave, Car she gave Claudia everything she can handle. And then when she fought Tatiana Suarez, I was like, oh. She's really giving her a tough go. All right. Now, like I said, Carla's actually like the granted, she's losing these these fights, but these are top quality competition, especially Tatiana Suarez. So then that made me really say, like, all right, Cla Carla's is putting it together. Carla's getting better. Um, and we saw that on Saturday, and man, she looked phenomenal. Do I think she's next? I mean, would I put her next? Personally, no, I wouldn't. I would still put Wei Lee first. And granted, people say she got finished. I get it. I understand why she wouldn't and why she shouldn't and why Carla technically deserves it. But I'm doing... The only reason why I'm saying it is because I'm going off of who I think actually would give her a better fight. Yes, I do think Carla's better. Yes, Carla did beat Rose. But Rose is nowhere near that same... Like, uh, she's nowhere near that same fighter from the tough finale. We all know that. Um, so I definitely think that 
that fight's interesting still, though. I'm not going to sit here and say that Carla has no chance of winning because she obviously won the first fight. She still has a mental edge over Rose. And who knows? We know Rose can sometimes be mentally up and down. She already lost to her before. We She could... The creep, the the doubt could honestly start to creep back into her head. So, like I said, it does make an interesting fight, but I don't know, man. I'm just really interested to see how that Wei Li versus Rose fight really goes in multiple rounds without the finish. So that's I'm just that's probably me being just being biased, but I do understand, and the matchmakers probably should do Carla versus Rose too. I just don't care. I don't want it. Um, but yeah, the main event fight, the fight that woo wee, I was wrong i didn't say any i didn't make a video about it but i was texting some friends back and forth and i told them who i thought was gonna win and i was wrong um that's the cody garbrand versus rob font fight i was wrong i thought cody was gonna win um i thought cody after getting that knockout uh i thought that with uh with the sun sal i was like oh he's he's maybe mentally he's he's there he's not gonna just rush in like a crackhead and get knocked out like he's done you know like three times but not only did we not really get an aggressive Cody at all, we got like a timid, kind of scared. Like, I don't want to say he was scared. I would never disrespect this man. But it was very timid. Like, he was conscious that he can get knocked out. And that's no way to that's no way to fight, especially when you're Cody. I've never seen him back down like that. Rob was hurting him a lot. And the crazy thing is, Cody's chin was holding up. Granted, it had probably held up because he retreated a lot when he did get cracked. And he wrestled a lot. And that's what... I found out as well, he can't wrestle like often because if he does, he gasses out because he looked tired. After the first round when he was just wrestling Rob Font, he he was done. He was, cardio was non, non-existent. But we saw when he was aggressive, he actually landed some good blows, but Rob could take all his punches. And he's not used to that. He's not used to people being able to actually, like him to be able to land clean and for them to keep walking forward. I mean, Cody got hands, man. Cody got power. He normally knocks people out easily. Not this time. Rob Font's a bigger man. Better boxer. He was aggressive. Pace was good. I mean, I was I was impressed by Rob Font, man. Like, good to that dude, bro. Like, that's that Puerto Rican in him because that dude was taking shots, but he was delivering a lot more. And um, Cody couldn't hang. I was I was very disappointed. And I'm some some of my friends said I'm like saying this too early, but I don't care. To me, Cody's washed. It's over for him, in my opinion, as a champion. He's not going to be a champion, a world champion again. He's 29 years old, but I do think that his life as a champ is completely done. I think he's just going to be known as an elite fighter that's really good, that can get some good wins. But I don't even see him getting a title shot again. I just have a hard time seeing him beat the elite of, of the elite. Because here's the thing. Once you lose, because you will lose in MMA unless you're John Jones. Unless you, or like once you lose, after your fights, tell me who, how you really are. Because once you lose, people kind of have game plans. Like once everybody figured, like Aaron Sylvan, what's your thing? Wrestling. All right. And eventually we're just going to wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. And eventually that, you know, the wrestling contributed to him losing to Chris Weidman. I mean, he got taken down the first round. He got real lackadaisical on the feet because he just assumed he was just going to get taken down because that's all Chris was doing. Set up the shot. Boop. Knocked him out. Dominic Cruz. One thing that people start to realize once he lost to Cody we should start chopping his leg. Well, I actually started before Cody. I actually started with TJ. People notice, chop this man's legs down. And he's honestly human. TJ almost won. He did lose, but he almost won. Cody really didn't, you know, do too many leg kicks. But we did see with Henry Cejuda. What did he do? Leg kicks. Once there's a game plan of your flaws and your weaknesses and you start to lose, we start to see people implement that. And then we start to see who you, who are you really? Are you really that good? Or, you know, was it just a phase and people just didn't know how to figure you out? So, um, you know, Cody, he's one in three. I mean, one in four now in his last five. It's, I mean, that speaks for itself. That's pretty bad, man. I said one in four. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's one in four now. That's awful. Um, and I do think that now, like I said, he's just going to be a good fighter, but I just don't see him winning any titles. I don't see him getting a good title shot. Uh, Rob Font. I mean, I think he needs one more fight possibly before he gets a title shot. I still don't know what they're going to do with that division as far as like, or, well, obviously they, you would assume they're going to get Peter Yan the rematch, but it's like, are they really like, are they going to go with Rob? I don't know. But there's a lot of people that's in that conversation, but I probably would just do the rematch and have Algie fight uh, Peter Yan again. Uh, but yeah, so that's how I felt about that fight. And I explained why I think he's washed. I mean, hopefully he could prove me wrong, but at the age of 29, I don't think his chin is, 
I don't think he has a good chin. I'm gonna be honest with you. Granted, he took all those shots, but I think that was because he retreated a lot. He doesn't trust his chin. That's the most important thing because you can see that in his shots. Once he, once he landed, or once Rob landed, he looked like he was about to get knocked out every time. I'm like, bro, what is going on? You're taking the shots. Just, just keep going. You know, throw these combos. You know, be a little aggressive. I know you don't want to be too aggressive, but be aggressive. That's your nature. That's who you are as Cody. You're not a good counterboxer. He's an awful counterboxer because he gets punched a lot. Uh, but like I said, man, it, I saw a lot of flaws that he has to clean up. Um, I don't know if that's switching camps or whatever it is, but he's, he has to clean it up or he's not going to be in the UFC for too long because he has like two more losses before he's cut, which is ridiculous to think because he was just world champion like two or three years ago. Um, but yeah, that's all I have. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. As you know, like subscribe, all that good stuff. This is Showtime's fight form. Be blessed guys.